Hi, and uh, welcome back to part two of the setting a Wi-Fi direct with Raspberry Pi. Um, sorry, this one took a bit of time. Um, if you haven't watched the part one of this video, um, please go watch it. Otherwise, you know the rest of this video is not probably not going to make much sense. Um, so that being said, let's hop to it. So could you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. So so. Picking up from where we left off from the last video, uh, you should have compiled the P2P UI application. So let's just try to uh, launch it. And then you should see something like this. So let's prep the application a little bit. So uh, let's do a D, which would, uh, what is it? It says the name, yeah, it says the device name. So I'm just gonna set it to test one. And then um, let's specify the intent. So the intent specifies how much you want to be the group owner or the one that issues uh, IP addresses or receives DSCP requests. So if you have a plain installation on the Raspberry Pi, chances are you don't have a DHCP server installed, So which is exactly what I want. So I want to specify the intent to be 15. I don't want to be the DHCP server at all. So by specifying 15 on the Raspberry Pi, the Pi would issue the DHCP request to the phone or the, the other the other peer in my case is the phone. And then the phone will be responsible for issuing um, the IP addresses. Okay, so now we're ready at least on, on this end, I believe. Yeah, so um, let's go back to my phone. So here's my phone. And then you need to bring up the Wi-Fi page. So this is uh, a Nexus 4. Um, so nothing fancy here. I'm, I assume you know how to get to this page. Um, so you want to go to the bottom right, and then you want to click on Wi-Fi Direct. And then, so now my endpoint is called, on the phone, my phone endpoint is called Kaiju. I just watched Pacific Rim, like, a long time ago. Um, and then my, my Raspberry Pi endpoint is called Test1 for the time being. So let's enable it. So let's press E, enable it, and it'll ask you what mode you want to be in. We want to be in device mode. So press 1, and then press Enter. Okay, so so this is the flaky portion of it. Um, I think this I, I, I think it's a sort of a, a probe and beacon process. So um, this may or may not work reliably. If it doesn't, you need to retry it. So let's redo that. And um, so again, so device device mode. And then the lengthy wait you see here is actually device performing the probing or the scanning of nearby Wi-Fi devices. Hence, it's taking a bit of time. So as you can see. The Pi now sees my phone, and my phone sees the Pi, so that's good. So now we can continue um, try to establish a connection. So I'm just going to tap test one on my phone. And then it will tell you to push B to accept. So now it's starting the, uh, the negotiation process. OK, so now, now the. Uh, uh, connection as television has completed. So, uh, so could you focus on the top part here? So, um, without shutting the application off, now let's see what IP addresses have we acquired. Uh, sorry. Big. So, as you can see, uh, my WLAN zero. Um, so, the the, the Wi-Fi direct interface has now acquired an IP address of this. So, this is effectively um, the IP address that you use to, oh, sorry, this is the IP address the phone uses that you can talk to the Pi with for the time being. So in the other video, you have seen um, me doing a, a for example, um, RTSP streaming um, using the Pi camera onto the phone. Um, that was me entering this IP addresses onto the VLC player on the phone uh, with, the, with the camera streaming application running on the Pi. Um, so that's about it. So could you just... Uh, yeah, so, um, so a couple of things. So again, this is a fairly manual process. So um, if you want to figure out how to do this programmatically, uh, you could look at the source code, right? So given that you have already compiled the P2P UI application, um, you can just look at the source code as this. So, um, so you do a VI and then P2P UI test Linux, right? And then you can, so what I did was, so, for, I think what I did was I did a grip and I replaced um, all the system calls uh, with a wrapper function. And then, that would, then I would in turn then print out exactly what was issued by the application to um, to, to initiate the, 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 the entire sequence. Um, 
it isn't very difficult, but then again, because you're going through multiple layers, I think there's a, a host APDU application and there, oh, sorry, there's a host APD application, a host CLI application, and then there's multiple layers that you need to hop through. So it doesn't always work reliably as far as I can I can tell. Um, and there's some other quirkiness to it. So, so the sequence that I went through is sort of the most vanilla, um, simple flavor of it, right? You could, you could, I, I think there are other variants where you could punch in a pin code um, or, you know, some other, other variants. Um, I haven't tried those. Um, I know some other, if you try to establish connection with some other phones, um, I think they, they, they do require that. Um, but I think with the Nexus, they, they generally don't care and it just works as is. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, so, so again, um, let me know if you have any questions. And again, sorry about the delay. I, I should have posted this video earlier. Um, thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.